You shouldn't be able to breadboard a 3 amp buck converter and have it work correctly. But I found a circuit that does. It works, it's simple, and it's made with some of the cheapest components that I could find. So let's go ahead and take a look at what you'll need to duplicate this project. You'll need a breadboard, some solid core wire, something like 22 gauge seems to work well, a 10 microhenry inductor, some ceramic capacitors, specifically 0.1 microfarad and 10 microfarad devices, resistors, the NR111D monolithic buck converter, and also something like a 3 amp 40 volt Schottky diode. I purchased cheap kits from eBay for resistors, inductors, and capacitors. I will include the links in the description so you can get the same or similar kits. You will also need this schematic. This is a simplified version of the typical application circuit on the front page of the data sheet. A couple things to notice. My iSET resistor is 8.2 ohms. I used a resistor here near 0 ohms instead of just using my 22 gauge wire because these resistors have very thin leads which let me connect one of the leads in the same socket as pin 4 of the NR111D. Finally you will need the breadboard layout here. A common problem I see in my day job is the PCB routed so that there's lots of parasitic inductance in the power path resulted in erratic switching once you start to draw current from the output. When breadboarding a circuit, there's really no way to have low inductance connections, so you end up with a poor layout. With a circuit that really needs a decent layout. This is why I say the circuit shouldn't work. Now it's important to separate this circuit from some DIY converter circuits where you manually drive a transistor on and off. In that case, the output is either unregulated, so the output voltage changes as the input voltage changes and as the load current changes, or they use an external microcontroller to monitor and adjust the output. The circuit that I'm showing today regulates the output based on two resistors connected to the feedback pin and has all the features you would expect from a modern buck converter. If we just briefly take a look at the block diagram, you can see that there's a lot going on here. Now I think the DIY circuits are really helpful if for no other reason than to convince you that you never want to do it that way again. Since this circuit is just for hobby projects, I only want to know if it works on a very basic level. Does the output voltage regulate to the correct voltage? Is the switching stable? And is anything going to burn up? Now part of knowing if anything is going to burn up is ensuring that the inductor doesn't saturate. And ideally our inductors would have come with a data sheet like this showing rated current, saturation current, and a curve showing inductance versus current. But the kit that I ordered didn't come with any data, so I had to verify that I wasn't saturating the inductor. To make this easier, I tested it on a custom PCB. To make the measurement, I added a 0.1 ohm resistor in series with the inductor. Since my input supply is isolated, and so is my load, the only earth ground in my system is my scope probe ground. Because of this, I could make a high side measurement across a 0.1 ohm resistor and get a representation of inductor current. The inductor kit I used came with two 10 marker Henry inductors, so I looked at both. What we want to see with inductor current is that it ramps up at a constant rate and then ramps back down at a constant rate. But what we don't want, and which is what we see with the smaller inductor, is that the inductor current starts to ramp up at a constant rate, but as the current get, reaches a certain level, it then starts to increase at an increasing rate. This shows us that the inductor is saturating and we don't want to use it. With the larger inductor, it didn't saturate even out to 3 amps, so that's the one I used. The next step is to power up the breadboarded version and to verify that the switching is stable. At light load, the switching will be discontinuous, so it's really hard to tell if the circuit is working properly until we add a load. Once the inductor current becomes continuous, we should have a constant duty cycle train of pulses with a duty cycle equal to V out over V in. Next, I check the temperature rise. Now, I used a thermal camera, but an IR thermometer will also work well. At 3 amps, the temperature continued to tick up higher and higher. But at 2 amps, the temperature stabilized after a couple minutes. So you could say this would be a 3 amp part for short durations and 2 amps steady state. Finally, I checked that the switching was stable across the input range, 10 to 14 volts, and it was rock solid. And that's it. Thanks for watching.